Data frames are fast but small. Databases are big but slow. New data frames may just be the best of both worlds. Whether you use R, Python, Julia, or some other analytics language, this question may just help you address the question of when to use different types of data frames, databases, or both. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Uh, this question came up on Quora and it basically asks, for data scientists with Julia, would you rather use SQLite and data frames or would you prefer JuliaDB as a one for all solution? Now, to understand this question, let's just quickly take a look at what Julia and JuliaDB is. Now, over here we have the JuliaDB website. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Julia, Julia is a new analytics programming language. The idea of it is that it's specifically built for data analytics, data science. It's supposed to have the uh, simplicity of Python, but the speed of, say, C. So it's supposed to be a very fast language. Now, in case you're wondering, why don't I use Julia as a language? I Well, so I think it's a, a very interesting language and one that's definitely worth watching. Um, but between Julia, R, and Python, at this stage, I basically think that it doesn't quite have the ecosystem that are available for R or Python. Right now, in terms of being able to churn out a really, really quick kind of end-to-end -end solution, R is like ridiculously fast for doing those kind of things because of things like uh, Tidyverse, R Markdown, and Shiny. And for Python, it's got the integration with cloud computing, IoT, uh, and much more libraries for things like deep learning and different things like that. So again, it has a kind of massive ecosystem around it, which you're just not going to get if you move to something like Julia, at least not at this stage. So anyway, moving on, Julia DB effectively looks like it's a next generation data frame. And there are a few of these things available. So over here, we can see a few things. So it's just in time compiled. So one of the reasons why languages like C++ are faster than languages like R and Python uh, is because you need to compile them uh, in order to run your code. Now, just so you're aware that it is possible to compile R and Python code as well. It's just that you normally don't need to when you're doing sort of interactive analytics. So over here, we've also got other things like uh, compute in parallel, store any data type, um, fast CSV parser, etc. We've got some benchmarks here, which are comparing JuliaDB versus Pandas. And uh, this is interesting. I think uh, a few things I just wanted to uh, point out here. So first of all, both base R data frames and Pandas data frames are actually relatively old now. And so they are very much first generation uh, data frames that are limited by the amount of memory that you have. And they're also single node, single core. Uh, so even though that pretty much all computers have uh, multiple core CPUs these days, um, sometimes maybe eight different cores on a CPU, Pandas and Base R will only use one of them. And for that reason, they're going to be a lot slower than some of the newer types of data frames available. Uh, JuliaDB being one of them, but you also have things like um, data.table for R, uh, which is now also being ported across to Python. Very, very fast data frame, probably still one of the fastest data frames available for single node computing. And then we have things like Dask and Spark, which I think would be more comparable to something like JuliaDB because these two types of data frames are also distributed, which means you can spread them across several computers, uh, which is fantastic when you're starting to deal with much larger data sets. The only thing to keep in mind by the time you are getting to this stage, you do need a certain amount of infrastructure uh, because you're not working on one computer anymore, you're working across several, which means you need those computers set up 
and in place. Otherwise, you're really not taking advantage of the distributed nature of these types of data frames. And between, say, JuliaDB, Dask, and Spark, I mean, I haven't really seen the benchmarks between any of them. I'd say they're similar competing type of products, but between all of them, Spark is going to work across any programming language, whereas something like JuliaDB or Dask is only going to work in either Julia or Python respectively. So just something to keep in mind there. So we've got some more, more benchmarks, parallel versus serial programming. And uh, yeah, here we've got a comparison again. So as mentioned, distributed computing basically means that you can spread your work across multiple computers to make things run faster. So data larger than memory. So with certain data frames and types like Spark and stuff like that, you can have it in memory or on disk. Keep in mind that memory based computing, like basically memory is thousands of times faster than disk based computing. So even though you have data frames which are able to have data larger than memory, you don't necessarily want to. Um, but we'll go over that in a little bit more in a sec as well. Um, distributed computing means you can have the memory from lots of different computers. Uh, and so that's one way of not necessarily running out of memory, but memory is again, much more expensive than hard disks. So if you have a lot of data that may still be a limitation simply because of cost. Okay. Uh, multiple indexes, index types, and you know, so basically there's a, a few different benefits here, but anyway, let's flick back over to this uh, answer. Uh, put together here. So um, not all data frames are made equally. So as mentioned, um, the base R and pandas data frames are really slow data frames. So they're not really the best comparison uh, to put these things against. For single node computing, uh, data.table is a really great library to go to. And otherwise, Spark and uh, Dask and uh, JulieDB could be really good options for distributed computing to spread across multiple computers. Okay, so the next part of this is really taking a look at uh, data frames versus uh, databases, because this question basically asks, you know, would you rather be using a database with a regular data frame, or would you be using these kind of next generation data frames? And um, from what we've talked about so far, you might kind of be getting the impression that, yeah, look, uh, makes more sense to use the uh, newer data frames because, well, generally they're going to be in memory. They're going to be a data structure, uh, which is uh, much more conducive to analytics. So in general, the difference between a database and a data frame is that data frames are optimized for analytics where databases are optimized for transactions and storage. And so these are very uh, kind of different objectives. So data frames, they're going to be in memory. They're going to be uh, generally kind of read only uh, data and they're going to be like temporary data. So you, you load it in, do your analysis um, and, and then it uh, disappears again. So with databases, you're on disks, which are much slower, much higher capacity uh, for more permanent storage. Transactions are going to be easier. So databases are usually fed from different forms and information systems where you know, users, like lots of users connect to it and stick in data, update data and update the databases. So data frames are just not good for that type of stuff at all. And databases, if you're familiar with databases, you'll be familiar with concepts like uh, normalization and denormalization. Again, normalization is a way of organizing your data, but it's also a way of keeping the data sizes smaller. Data frames, on the other hand, are denormalized. So, um, which basically means instead of having lots of different tables, uh, which kind of removes the duplication of data, data frames opt for one big table with a lot of duplication because this type of data layout and structure, also known as sort of long form data, tidy data, something like that, uh, is going to be 
used for things like machine learning, predictive analytics, um, and all of those kind of things. So <clears throat> very different objectives actually when you come to these when you come to these two different things. Now, pairing a database, a lot of the times analysts will actually pair a data frame with a database simply because the data that you're trying to work with starts in a database to start with, right? Because like we said, all the data is collected and then you need to take it out in order to analyze it. And so this is where SQL comes in very, very handy. But the mistake that a lot of people make is that sometimes you're taking extracts from systems. So a lot of times when you're working on different jobs and with different clients, you don't necessarily have SQL access to the database. That would be sort of ideal. That would be great uh, because uh, it's much easier to automate a lot of the workflows much easier to build a data pipeline if you already have database access. But a lot of times when you're starting out a project, people run extracts and then glue those back together. Now, people who are familiar with databases, what they sometimes tend to do is take all these different extracts, set up another smaller database. Uh, this would also be, could be referred to as a data mart to organize and structure all of the data, put it together, do all the joins, put all the queries together, and then load that into a data frame. Now, generally speaking, this is a somewhat redundant step, which actually slows down the process quite a bit. Because as mentioned, databases typically run off disk. And so you're taking all your data, writing it to disk, which is a slow process because hard disks are slow. And then normally putting it into some sort of uh, denormalized format. Uh, and then you're taking that data, running a query off it. Um, so denormalizing the data so that uh, all the tables get merged into one and then exporting that off to your data frame. So you take the small data, you make it big, uh, which again, slows down the speed um, because there's more data to extract from the query. Uh, and then you're putting it into a data frames. Whereas a lot of those joins and everything could be done in the data frames directly uh, in memory. So it's going to be much, much faster than working through a database. Um, so long as uh, the data actually fits in memory. But if you've seen some of my other videos, you probably know that uh, these days, even with like, say 16 gigs of RAM or so, uh, you can deal with maybe 10 million records of data. So there is actually a fair amount that you can do before you either start needing to go to a memory upgrade or uh, moving to a distributed system or moving to a database. So just a few things to to keep in mind there. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you're working with a database and a data frame, in order to get around the fact that your data is larger than memory, you're actually still going to have a bottleneck at the data frame stage. So if you're using traditional data frames, which are limited by memory, there's only so much of the database information that you can load into your data frame at one time. And so often what you will need to do is you will need to write some code in order to take that data from your database and say, just take, I don't know, for argument's sake, 10 million records at a time, process that data, offload it, grab the next 10 million records, and do that again and again until all your work is effectively done. So between these two, kind of two solutions of uh, using a distributed data frame and using a database with a traditional uh, data frame, you're going to be much, much better off using a distributed data frame over a database. But keeping in mind, that you will need a certain setup and hardware in order to do this. So it's not absolutely free, but the technology is widely available now. So from a simply a technological standpoint, 
definitely go with the distributed data frame. It just kind of makes a lot more sense. Anyway, hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, if you want to read the full answer to this question that I put here, uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Uh, any questions, thoughts about this, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.